All right, graphing radical functions. Um, radical function is a function that contains a radical expression with the independent value x inside the radical or the radicand. Um, so in, in other words, if I had a function, say, f of x equals the square root of x, that is a radical function. Okay, in fact, that is this radical function. Okay, this is the parent function of the square root of x over here. All right, and in fact, the cube root of x, f of x, is equal to the cube root of x. That is a radical function. In fact, this is the parent function for the cube root. Uh, I put those on here just so that we can reference them, especially when we do transformations later. Um, but square root uh, function, notice we're dealing with just a positive root of x. You have these values. And a cube root function, we're dealing with um, a function that, that kind of looks like a cubic function, but uh, laid on its side. Now, square root function starts at, the parent function starts at 0, 0, and continues off to the right forever, where the cube root function actually continues um, for all values of x. So the domain of a, a square root function starts at, starts at 0 on x, and it gets bigger. So 0 is greater than or equal to 0, or x is greater than or equal to 0, whereas the domain on a cube root function exists for all values of x. It continues out to the right and left forever, so it's all real numbers. Okay, so all real numbers. The range, well, the range uh, on the y-axis starts at 0, and it goes up, so it's increasing. So at y is 0, it's increasing. So y is greater than or equal to 0. It's supposed to be 0. Whereas the range for a, a cube root is actually going down forever, even though it's kind of going down slowly and it's going up forever, uh, the range is also all real numbers. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and um, try to graph some of these. So first going to graph them just by using a table of values. So f of x is equal to 1 half x. So one way to do this is to uh, first recognize it's a square root function. We're not moving it left or right at all because we're not, we don't have any translations. We're not adding anything to the inside of the radical. We're not moving it up or down. Um, but really, uh, I need to know where to start this function. And since I'm not adding on the, anything on the inside, that means my function will start at the same location that its parent function did. So the parent function square root of x, this is a square root function. So we just have that 1 half in there as well, but it's going to still start at 0. So when x is 0, I substitute 0 in for x. 1 half times 0 is 0, and the square root of 0 is 0. Okay, so I have 0, 0. And then I can substitute another value in, say like 1. And I could do uh, 1 half times 1 is 1 half, square root of 1 half. Uh, we'll round to the nearest tenth here, so it's about 0 0.7. Okay, and if I were to substitute 2 in, 1 half of 2 is 1, and the square root of 1 is 1. Okay. And so let me go ahead and keep graphing these there. There's 0.7, oops, excuse me, okay, 0.7-ish, and 2, 1. Okay, and we'll go ahead and substitute 3 in. And half 3 is 3 halves, square root of 3 halves is 1.2. Okay, and so now we're up about there-ish. Okay, and we'll go ahead and put 4 in. Um, half 4 is 2, the square root of 2 is about 1.4, all right, that's one and a half. So we kind of do this thing, all right, and if I wanted to, I could I could substitute 6 in, 6 is about 1.7, so if I wanted to continue that out there, it would be about right there, all right. The domain, once again, I'm starting at 0, okay, on x, all right, so x starts at 0, and it gets bigger. So x is greater than or equal to 0, and the range also starts at 0. So really, if you think of where the vertex is, that's going to be your domain and range, right? You're going to start here on a square root function domain, and you're going to start here for range. And it just tells you, then you just have to figure out on the x-axis, am I going to the right or the left? If I'm going to the right, it's greater than or equal to because of the dot there. And if I'm going to the left, it would be less than or equal to. And for range, if I'm, in, if I'm going up, it's greater than or equal to. If I was going down, it'd be less than or equal to. All right. So let's go ahead and do another one here. We have, once again, a cubic function. In this case, 
Um, notice I'm just multiplying whatever my cubed root was by negative 4. I'm not adding anything on the inside, so my graph actually, like the point of inflection, the point at which it turns, so um, this piece right here, where it does that slide, that part right there is going to still be at 0, 0. And I'm going to actually put that in the middle so I can build to the left and right of it. So if you think of this parent function, I have two values to the right, I have two values on the x-axis to the left, so I'm going to try to do the same thing here. And I'm just going to use negative 1 and negative 2 on x, and then 1 and 2. And when I calculate it, I put negative 2 in for x and do the math, I would get negative, or excuse me, I get 5.03, so we'll just call it 5.0. If I put negative 1 in, well, negative 1 is negative 1. The cubed root of negative 1 is negative 1, excuse me, and negative 1 times negative 4 is actually 4. And then if I put 1 in, I get negative 4 out. And I put 2 in, I get about negative 5.0-ish. All right, so <clears throat> if I look at this, I got negative 2 on x, 5 on y, negative 1 on x, and 4 on y. 0 on x and 0 on y, 1 on x and negative 4 on y, and 2 on x and negative 5 on y. So you have this function that kind of does the, oops, excuse me there, my hand flipped when I was there. All right, does that and does that. All right, well, my domain, once again, it's extending to the right and left forever, so it's all real numbers and it's extending up and down forever. So that's also all real numbers. All right. Let's go ahead and take a look at another one here. In fact, actually, before we do another one where we're going to graph using transformations, let's go ahead and talk about our review of transformations. So a horizontal transformation. Um, think of it this way. If I have, let's deal with a square root function. If I have f of x is equal to let me get rid of some stuff here. a times the square root of x minus h, all plus k. Okay. If I have that, um, if I have the x minus h inside, anything being added or subtracted on the inside of the radical, usually you wouldn't see parentheses necessarily, um, but it's inside with the radical. That means it's a horizontal translation. And just remember, excuse me, just remember if you see um, x minus h, it's actually moving to the right. Moving to the right when we have x minus h. Okay, It's moving to the left when we have x plus h. All right. So it's kind of, if you recall, it's kind of counterintuitive. If you recall from earlier when we talked about these, if you're moving to the left, you're actually adding to the inside with x. A vertical translation is kind of, it does really what you think. So that's dealing with the part on the outside here. That's the K. Okay. And so if you have it moving up, that would actually be when we're adding K. If it's moving down, okay, that would be when we're subtracting K. So it's really what you'd think it would be. All right. We kind of separate these. A reflection, now we don't actually see it here, but if like A was negative or the X was negative, okay, so if you have a negative X on the inside, so the negative's in here with X, that's actually, we think of that as F of negative X. That would be a reflection over the Y axis, okay? So it's moving horizontally, so if you think of your graph, and you had a point that started here, it would be moving horizontally, it would move over to here. Okay? Whereas if you have negative f of x, it's reflecting over the x-axis. And so once again, if you think start here, you're moving downward like that. All right. All right, and so if I have a horizontal stretch or shrink, I'm actually, um, if I'm multiplying the x by something on the inside, I'm actually doing a horizontal stretch, and it's kind of backwards, remember. So if I'm going, if whatever a is on the inside with x, so if we had like the a right here, okay, so 
So let me uh, get a highlighter there. Usually we'd use a different letter than A, but if we had it right there in front of the X, then as long as A is smaller than 1, um, but greater than 0, okay, so A would actually be between 0 and 1, that would be a stretch, which is kind of weird. Like one half is a stretch, it's a stretch of two. And then if it's if it's greater than one, it's actually a shrink. Vertically, it's exactly what you'd think. If A is greater than one, it's a stretch. So if it's on the outside, and if A is less than one, it's a shrink. Okay, so now what we can do is we can actually use that to graph some of these, all right? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to describe the transformation first, and then I'm going to graph it using transformation. So if I have f of x is equal to the square root of x, uh, that function, remember from our parent function we graphed at the very beginning, if we kind of reference all the way back here, oops, one more, right here, the cube root, those are our parent functions. So if we go back to those, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, or 4, 2, okay? So there is my parent function. And actually, rather than using, oops, rather than using dot, dots, I'm going to I'm going to use x's right there, okay? And so the plus 4 happens on the inside. So it's horizontal, it's a horizontal. So we'll call this the first thing, okay? Horizontal, translation, four, or let's go left, because of the plus, it's opposite, right? Left, four, all right? And then the second one would deal with the minus three. The minus three, so this is our plus 4. This was our minus 3. Minus 3 is happening on the outside, so it's a vertical translation. Down 3. So I'm going to go 4 to the left. It'll be the first thing. So 1, 2, 3, 4, each point. And I'm just going to put a 1 saying that's the first thing. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. Now we're going to go down three. So from those points, one, two, three. It's going to be number two, two, three, one, two, three. All right. There we've got it. And I'm just going to graph those points. If I wanted to, I can graph another one, but those are my values. Okay, so that's using transformations to graph it. And so we can do the same thing with the cube root function. First, graph the parent function parent function, remember, was at 0, 0, and then we had um, 1, 1, and we had negative 1, negative 1, and then And negative 8, negative 2. And so remember, the parent function I'm dealing with is this one right here. Okay, so I'm just plotting the point. All right. And so from there, the negative 2 is a horizontal shrink. Well, the 2 is. We deal with the 2 first. It's a horizontal shrink by a factor of, and we'll usually say BAFO there, B-A-F-O. We take the reciprocal of one half, the shrink. We take the reciprocal if it's on the inside. And then the negative, so that's the first thing, that's the two. So we're multiplying by. And then the second thing is the negative, and the negative is a reflection. And it's on the inside, so it's reflecting over 
the y axis. Okay, so it's it's kind of flipping like this. It starts here and moves over. Okay. And so number one, we're going to go ahead and shrink everything horizontally, which means we're shrinking towards y by a factor of two, negative. So, or excuse me, by a factor of one half. So I'm going to switch colors here. And I'm going to use one to do that. So this that's two units away from the y-axis, or excuse me, one unit away is now going to be a half a unit. This that was eight units away from the y-axis is now going to be four units away, half of that distance. This point that was one unit away is going to be a half a unit. And this point that was eight units away is now going to be four units. Okay, so that was the first thing. And then the second one, let's go ahead, the negative is going to reflect them over the y-axis. So this point that's right here is now going to be right there. This point that's at positive 4 is now going to be at negative 4. This one's going to move over and there. And this point hasn't moved because it's on the y. So our graph, oops, excuse me, try that again. Something like that, and like that. There you've got it. All right. Let's go ahead and actually talk about how these look equation-wise. Let's graph, let the graph of G be a horizontal shrink by a factor of one-fourth, followed by a translation two units to the left of the root of X. Write a rule for G. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, if I'm doing a horizontal shrink by a factor of one-fourth, that's going to be the first thing here. Okay. All right. And so since I'm doing two different things, rather than jumping right to G, I'm going to say, okay, the first thing I'm going to do one at a time, I'm going to say um, H of X. So I'm not going to use F of X. I'm going to say H of X is equal to F of, well, horizontal shrink by a factor of one fourth. Horizontal happens inside parentheses. Shrink by a factor of one fourth would actually be four times x. It's the reciprocal of one fourth. Since you're shrinking, it's a reciprocal there. So we're taking f of four x, meaning whatever x is in our f of x equation, we're going to substitute four x in for that x. So we now have the root of four x, like so. Okay. And so from there, we're going to go ahead and, and I'm not going to simplify or anything. I'm just going to leave it at that for now. Okay, that's h of x. So we've done our first one. And let's go ahead and move to our second one, trans, followed by a translation, two units to the left. Okay, well, that's going to be our g of x. g of x is going to take whatever h of x was, and it's going to go two units to the left. So it's going to move it to the left 2, meaning we're adding 2 to the inside. So it's going to be x plus 2. Okay, so that is going to replace the x here. So we now have the square root of 4 times x plus 2. That is g of x. And we could also write that as 4x plus 8. And there we got it. So doing the two steps really helps out there. All right, one last piece. And really, I'm more concerned that we can actually isolate y here. This is solve, solving for y graphing calculator use. If you're using like a Texas Instrument calculator, in order to graph it, you have to have it in y equals format. And in order to do that with like an equation one-third y squared equals x, you have to get y by itself first. Okay, so I'm gonna we're gonna get y by itself, and then um, we can put it on a, a graph a calculator. Or I'm actually gonna use Desmos here, which you don't actually have to have y by itself to do that, but that's okay. We're gonna show that. So to get y by itself, first thing I have to get rid of the one third. How do I do that? I multiply both sides by three, so I get y squared is equal to three x. Second step, I'm gonna take the root of both sides to get rid of that square. So now y is going to be equal to, and I'm imposing a root, so I have to do plus minus. It's an even root. If it's an even root, you have to put plus minus. Okay? So what that means really when I'm graphing this is I'm graphing two pieces. 
I'm graphing y is equal to the positive root of 3x, and I'm graphing y is equal to the negative root of 3x. So if you're doing a ti, using a ti, this would be like y sub 1 and y sub 2. And then you can graph both of those. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and actually, well, you know what, we'll do that here in a minute. Okay, let's solve for y on the second one first. So x squared plus y squared is equal to 36. First step, move the x squared over. So I get y squared is equal to negative x squared plus 36. Next, take the square root. So once again, I'm imposing a square root, so I have to put a plus minus. It's an even root. And negative x squared plus 36. Now, no, I can't just take the root of both x squared and 36. I have to, I'd have to add these up first. So I can't just cancel the radical and the squared and take, make, call that 6. It doesn't work. Okay. So um, if I'm graphing this, like y sub 1 would be the root of negative x squared plus 36, and y sub 2 would be the negative root of negative x squared plus 36. All right. So let's go ahead and graph some of those two things really quick. Okay. All right. By the way, here's where you solve for y. So, like if you if it just said solve for y, those would be your solutions. But these are the two we're going to graph. Okay. All right. So let me cruise on over to Desmos. <clears throat> There's our address there. Okay. I'll hit start graphing, and I'm going to just do the first one there. So y equals um, sqrt square root 3x. So there we got it. Okay, and then I'm going to go y equals negative sqrt 3x. And you'll notice it puts the bottom part of the graph there. So if we take that down there, we look at this, there is, there is our graph. Okay, we have the top, func the top portion here with the positive root. We have the bottom portion here with the negative root. Okay. Now, if I change that up, let me go just close the or turn these off. Let's do one more um, set of graphs here. The second graph here where we had the um, x squared. So the first one, just so that we're following along, was this piece up here. Okay. Second one is going to be this piece down here. All right. So we're going to go y is equal to um, the square root of negative x uh, squared plus 36. So you get half of a circle there. Okay, and then we go y is equal to, and hopefully you recognize what's going to happen when we put the other part in here, negative x um, squared plus 36. So you start noticing, even when you're typing things out, like when we have a 3 in there, notice how um, it changes. Okay, but then we put the 6 in. That's changing our, our diameter there. So anyway, there we got the top and the bottom part of the circle. All right. So that's how you do it. In your graphing calculator, you just put them both in and check them out. I think that's it. Yep, that's all I got. Good lucky.